Well, I think there's different things that are in it for history. One is just making history more broadly accessible to people. We have uh, all these records and information that was kind of walled off in archives for most of uh, history. Uh, and, and now these can be made more easily and widely accessible to people who might be interested in them for reasons of family, community, um, and so forth. So that's one benefit. And I think the other benefit is that with all of these records and uh, with all of this historical data, you can begin to ask questions that are really hard to answer when you're just sitting in the archive flipping through documents because you can begin to think about patterns across many, many documents. You can think about uh, other kinds of data analysis that, that can illuminate uh, areas of history that we might have known something about in really local ways, but it can begin to tie those local things together and, and allow you to ask big, big questions. One thing that they can do is simply allow you to work at a different scale than you might, and not necessarily a, a, a better or more uh, scientific scale, but simply for people who are interested in patterns across wide swaths of time, or people who are interested in uh, patterns across uh, large geography, or I, I work in literary history, and there are people who want to study patterns in the evolution of not one or two or ten books, but hundreds or thousands of books over time. Uh, and that's where these digital or computational approaches can allow you to ask questions at a scale that's really difficult for an individual researcher to ask them.